Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here. I thought we'd come outside. It's beautiful Minnesota morning. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. It's just beautiful. It's good to see some of you jumping on right away. I know that others of you will watch later. Uh, I'm just glad to be with you. I hope you got a cup of coffee. I'm sipping on some good old fashioned Minnesota dogwood coffee right here. I mean, feeling good. It's a great way to start the day. Hey, as people are jumping on, I just have a question for you. Uh, have you ever been reading the Bible uh, and come across a passage or um, you know, maybe a paragraph or just a verse that made you go like, what, what? Like, is the Bible allowed to say that? I don't know if I like that the Bible just said that. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, has the Bible ever made you feel uncomfortable? Has it ever made you feel like you're not sure what to do with? And my, my guess is that any uh, serious or even casual reader of the Bible has come across moments like that, where they read something in scripture where it's like, I'm not sure I'm allowed to like that, or like, I'm not sure I, I understand that. And typically I think our response is we either move on and we just like, forget about it, don't deal with it, move forward, or we allow it to stick on our brain and bother us. And sometimes it pushes us away from Jesus. But I think that those problem passages in the Bible are there on purpose. And what I mean by that is just yesterday I was being uh, prepared for this uh, uh, devotional and I, I had someone pray for me. And when they prayed, they, they thanked God for these difficult passages of scripture because they're meant to bring us into greater intimacy with him. When we don't understand something in scripture, uh, it's meant to bring us closer to God, to ask deeper questions and to uh, really align our heart more with his. And so in some ways, I think we have cause to be grateful for difficult passages of the Bible. Uh, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. We are walking through the book of 1 Timothy as a church right now. This past weekend, uh, I gave a message uh, on leadership, but that's in chapter three. But where we're, where we're at today is at the very end of chapter two. And at the very end of chapter two, Paul is giving some instruction to, to his protege, Timothy, about proper leadership and proper order within the church. And this is what he says. I'm just going to read it to you and let it sit for a second. This is what it says. In chapter 2, verse 8, Paul says, Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands, but doing it without anger or disputing. I also want the women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. And, and this is where it gets really good, a woman should learn in quietness and full submission. He goes on, I do not permit a woman to, a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. For Adam was formed first and then Eve, and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. But women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with propriety. Whoo! That's heavy. <laughs> I think that hits our modern ears in a way that makes us feel like the Bible doesn't know what it's talking about. Paul didn't know what he was talking about. But what I want to do today is I want to teach you a little bit how to dive deeper into the Bible, how to face problem passages like this and kind of navigate through them so that you can gain better understanding and a deeper appreciation for who God is and how to be better and best follow Jesus. Because we will come across these passages. Uh, what matters is how we deal with them. So there's three questions I wanna encourage you to ask yourself whenever you come across passages like this, and I specifically want to talk about this one today, because this one deals with women in leadership, women in authority, and specifically women's place, a, a woman's place in the church. Now, I, I recognize that I'm a man talking about this, but Paul was also a man talking about it, and I think that he had, I think that he had a real point to make to Timothy that I want to try to convey to you today. So three questions to ask yourself when you come against, against problem passages in the Bible. The first one is, uh, what's the biblical consistency? So when here in 1 Timothy, it sounds like Paul is saying women have no authority. Women should be quiet. They should be submissive. They shouldn't wear jewelry. They, they should be pushed to the margins of society. I think that's, uh, that's how often we can read this passage. But what's the consistency of Paul's thought throughout the New Testament? Because Paul wrote quite a few letters in the New Testament. 
And it's interesting to note the role that women play in Paul's understanding of how they work in the, in the, in the life of the church. For one, let's not forget that women were the very first apostles. They were the first ones to run to see Jesus, the resurrected Christ, after he rose from the dead. That's no small thing because Jesus then told those women to go back and instruct the male disciples. And that day, that was completely unheard of. Later, Paul called women apostles and deacons, which were high-level leadership uh, roles in the church. He said that in Romans 16. He also expects women to be praying and prophesying in the church in 1 Corinthians 11. And in Galatians 3, 28, he, he says that those who are in Christ, that there is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free nor male nor female. In Christ, we are unified and equal. And so if all of those things are true in Paul's thought, then it must also be true that Paul is saying something more specific here in 1 Timothy. Because why would he contradict himself in one passage against all of those other passages? So the first question to ask yourself is, what's the biblical consistency? The second question to ask yourself is, what is the historical context of this particular passage? Now, we, we really think a lot of scholars, a lot of people that are way smarter than I am, think that Paul was writing to Timothy while Timothy was doing ministry in a city called Ephesus. And there's a lot of in interesting things about this city called Ephesus. But most importantly, the, the largest religion in Ephesus was the cult of Artemis, which was the Greek name. The, the, the Roman name was Diana. And Diana uh, or Artemis was, was known as this goddess of war, this goddess of love. And she was particularly known for her priestesses because they were all women. And the role of this, this cult in the, in the first century was to lord power over men to keep them submissive and quiet and move them to the margin of society. Now for us, that seems really counterintuitive, but for, for Paul in his day, if he, if he was trying to encourage young Timothy to lead well, he was really trying to ex teach Timothy that both men and women have an equal place in Christ's church. And so a woman, a woman should not be able to learn in order to gain authority over men in order to push them to the society, to, to push them to the side. Instead, women have a right to learn and a right to submit themselves under Christ so that he might be, he might reign over them and give them authority in the church. You see, Paul's direction here for Timothy is, is less about pushing women or putting them in their place, and it's more about elevating women to an equal standard with men. Because in Timothy's experience, he was seeing priestesses that, were, that had all kinds of authority, that were lording it over men, and that were seeking knowledge in order to gain power. And Paul was instructing Timothy to encourage women to learn and seek knowledge so that they can become one with Christ. So the first question is, what's the biblical consistency? And the second question is, what's the historical context? And the third most important question about any problem or difficult passage in the Bible is, how does this lead me towards Jesus? There's a great story in Luke chapter 10 where Jesus is reclining with his disciples. You know, he's at a house somewhere. They're all gathered together. Jesus is teaching them. They're all kind of at his feet, which was very normal for the day to have kind of your teacher elevated physically above you and teaching you. And there in the house were two women, Mary and Martha. And typically the role of a woman was, was to not be in the position of a learner, not be in the position of, a, of an instructor or not be in the position of someone who is able to gain knowledge and understanding. But in this story, we see that Mary is seated at the feet of Jesus with all the other disciples. Martha is in the kitchen. She's cleaning. She's doing the kind of understood role of her day. But Mary is seated with Jesus on the floor. And when Martha kind of chides Mary to, to kind of get in the kitchen and kind of do what she's expected to do, Jesus says that Mary had chose the better thing. And what Jesus was saying there is that he made a way past cultural expectations for Mary to exist and coexist with men as a learner of the good news. In other words, Jesus was breaking cultural barriers to say that anyone has a seat at the table. Everyone is welcome to learn more about the kingdom of God. And so in Paul, 1 Timothy, where, where he's writing to Timothy, he's telling a woman should learn 
in quietness and full submission. We, t we tend to emphasize the words quietness and full submission, but in his day, the people reading would have emphasized a woman should learn. A woman should be included in the conversation. A woman should be a leader. She should gain knowledge not in order to lord it over other people, but she should gain knowledge because of the goodness of Jesus. And it's applicable and, and available to everybody. And so friends, my encouragement for you today is this. My challenge for you is this. Who are those people in our world, in our life, that are put to the margin of society? Who are those people that uh, tend to get overlooked? Who are the people that when we see them walk in the door, we feel uncomfortable? Who are those people that we ha might have pre prejudices against because of our cultural upbringing? Who are those people that need a place at the table? Because in Paul's language, I think in Jesus' language, he would say that all are welcome. All have the same and equal opportunity and all can come to know more about Jesus. So friends, when you come against problem passages in scripture, uh, I, I wanna encourage you to ask yourself those three questions. What's the biblical consistency? What does the Bible say about this consistently? What's the historical context? Dig into it a little bit. There's a lot of resources in, uh, on the internet. There's a lot of free resources. Uh, there's a couple of books that I'll recommend in just a moment. Um, and then most importantly, how does this lead you to Jesus? What did Jesus do and say about this? What can you learn from his lifestyle? Because at the end of the day, if our reading of scripture doesn't lead us to look more and act more and think more like Jesus, then we're reading it incorrectly. We don't read the Bible to gain more knowledge. We don't read the Bible to become more impressive. We read the Bible to become more like Jesus. So if you want to learn more about this particular topic, there's a couple books that I would really recommend. One of them uh, is, is this little commentary on 1 Timothy written by a guy named N.T. Wright. It's called uh, 1 Timothy for Everybody. It's excellent. Uh, a lot of things I have learned in my personal growth and discipleship to Jesus has been through N.T. Wright. And so it's a little, a, a little commentary called uh, 1 Timothy for Everybody. It's really, really good or everyone. Another one is called The Blue Parakeet. It's written by Scott McKnight. Uh, he talks specifically about women in ministry and women, women in leadership, and I, I've learned a ton from that, maybe the most uh, from, from him and his leadership. Um, and if you've got questions, that's okay too. We're here for those. Uh, there, there would be plenty of people that would have lots of questions with, with what I'm saying today. And you know what? They have a seat at the table too, because all are welcome. So friends, uh, may you be blessed by this. May this encourage you to engage with those difficult passages of the Bible, to look more like Jesus, and to gain more intimacy with God. I hope you have a wonderful day, and may God bless you. Peace, everybody.